Hey everybody, Clay Archer, CEO of DPC Technology. I'm excited today. We got a couple of new goodies in uh, for the new office. And one thing that I've been looking at for a long, long time is the floodlight. And it's been in beta or out of stock for quite some time. It actually was in stock. Um, and so we, we purchased one. Um, we're gonna put these at the new office. Uh, we also got the NVR Pro. We just did a review of that today. So check that out. There'll be a link down below if that's not already out. Uh, we also got some doorbells and we'll do those reviews actually when we move into the new building. But I wanted to open up the floodlight because I've been having some lighting issues in the front of the office. I wanted to test this out. I really don't know much about the floodlight. How is it gonna work? How am I gonna schedule it? How bright is it gonna be? Um, those are all things I'm really interested in. So before we get the installed at the office, I brought it home. I'm gonna test it out, see how bright it is, see how the scheduling of it works. Just kind of check out the device itself. Um, I'm probably gonna put more than just one in the office, but I wanted to test it out first. So I kind of wanted to see where it was. We're at the wiring phase probably in the next couple of weeks. So this will give me some time to test that, decide where I wanna put it in the office and uh, see whether it's worth the investment or not. Without any further ado, I'm gonna open up the box, see what's in the box, and then we'll fire it on and test it out. As always, really nice packaging from Ubiquity. I wouldn't expect anything less. And, well, it's a little bit bigger than I thought it would be. Um, so here's the unit itself. Uh, it's actually a little heavier than I thought it would be as well. Quite a few LEDs inside of it. Um, nice network jack on the back side, um, concealed away. We've got an angle mount here, so if we want to angle it. Also, the angle mount has a built-in um, level, which is pretty common on most of the Unify stuff lately. There's a nice little cover on everything to make sure there weren't any scratches in shipping. Um, also on the back of it, there is a reset sh uh, switch that is inside the unit itself. Other than that, there's just the regular QR code in here and some terms and conditions. Additionally, in the packaging, we have a, flat, a flush mount with another level, the typical way that Ubiquiti does their um, mounting hardware, really nice. It's inside the foam there so you don't lose it. And then there is a, an alternate cover, which has got a little diffuser on it for the lens over the, over the lights. So, that's all that's in the packaging. Um, we'll go ahead and fire it up now and we'll... Are you all right back there, Sketch? All right, so that's all that's in the packaging. We'll go ahead and fire it up, let the uh, Unified Dream Machine find it, and we'll jump into the software and see how that looks. All right, as you can see, we got the light fired up. Um, I've got it plugged into an edge switch. I will tell you that I started out trying to use a uh, PoE adapter. It did not work, did not power it on at all, nothing happened. So. Uh, I fired up a 16 port edge switch and it fired right on, all good to go. So it's actually on now and um, I'm gonna go into the software real quick. And let's go in ahead and add devices. I will tell you that I've already added the device once, played with it a little bit and then removed it. So it's not gonna need to do a firmware update. It did a firmware update the last time, no big deal. So I'm just going to add devices. It sees the device there. And I'm gonna go ahead and go okay to that. I'm gonna go ahead and pair it with the G4 Dome. This is one of the questions I had, you know, in the beginning is, can you just run it standalone or does it need to be paired with a camera? The answer is you could do it either way, but I'm gonna go ahead and pair it with the G4 Dome and it's gonna use the G4 Dome for its motion detections. And I'm gonna go next. It's gonna ask uh, how long after the uh, motion detection will it stay on, uh, even when it's dark. So I'm gonna say 15 seconds. I could leave it there. I probably, uh, in, in actuality, I'm probably gonna put it to one minute or five minutes. I will drive by that, that camera with my car and park, and uh, I wanna have enough time to get out of the car and make it back over to the area where the camera is to detect me again. So I would probably put it at five minutes. Um, I'll go ahead and leave it there, and we'll go next. Um, and now here's how you set up the light schedule. Again, we can go back in the device after the fact here and reset these up. You can do it on on motion or triggered. So basically that is using the, um, the camera to see when motion happens. When the, motion, the camera sees motion, it will turn on the light. It will leave it on for the amount of time that you have specified in the previous screen. Um, I could do it when it's dark so that it's just always gonna be on at nighttime, uh, which is another, I kind of wanted to know if it would do that. Basically putting it in an area where there's not a camera and it's just at nighttime, it'll just turn on and stay on. And then you can do it manual if you just wanted to go and turn it on uh, sporadically whenever you wanted it to be on. So I'm gonna leave it on motion um, and you can, on motion, you can say to do it all the time or just when it's dark out. I'm gonna go ahead and say just when it's dark out. And then you can set the motion sensitivity the same way you could in a camera. And I'm gonna go to next there. And you'll see it just shows up as another device there in your device list. 
Um, pretty simple. It went through and it rebooted a few times and uh, did a firmware update just like anything, uh, any other device would. Um, so if I click on it, you can see the basic information just like you would normally on any device. Um, it's saying it's paired to my G4 dome. My G4 dome is actually in the closet right now. On here, you've got some really basic uh, settings that you could do. You can turn the light off altogether, meaning it's not gonna not gonna function in any way, shape, or form. Uh, or you could turn it on, and you can adjust the brightness. And I don't know how that's gonna look in the shot, but I'll go all the way down. That's all the way down, and then I'm adding a little bit more brightness, a little bit more brightness, a little bit more brightness, a little bit more brightness and all the way up. All right, here we are in my office. It's dark now. We have a G4 dome in the closet that's kind of pointing out, looking for motion. It's dark in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and have Margaret walk in the room and see how the motion triggers the floodlight. It gets her pretty fast walking in the room. You can see it, she's lit pretty well. I mean, it's an average size room. I think it's lit pretty well. Go ahead and walk out of the room, hun. And uh, I'm gonna see how long it takes for it to turn off. I think it's, I, I've got it set for maybe 15 seconds to turn off here. And I'll have her walk back in her room after it turns off. I think it takes a little bit longer than 15 seconds, even though I've got it set for 15 seconds. And off. Go ahead and walk back in the room again. I also probably would play a little bit with the sensitivity. Um, I think uh, I've got it set, I was sitting in front of it on the chair and it was every time I moved just a, a millimeter, it was going, setting it off. So I turned it down a little bit. You might want to play with that. But anyways, this is exactly, this is what it looks like lit up in, inside of a room. It's on full power. Um, I might, you know, play with a little bit more outdoors. I, I'm not sure what this is going to look like outside. But for now, that's what it looks like uh, inside. All right, so this is one more time with the diffuser on the floodlight. So the quality of light will be a little bit more uh, diffused. I don't think it changed the detection at all. You can see the light is probably a little softer here. It might be a little less light, but other than that, I think it's pretty similar. Um, this is the floodlight with a diffuser on it. I'm interested to see how that's gonna look outside. Right now we're under construction and the reason I, I'm actually doing this video right now is we're at the final wiring stages before we go to drywall and I'm gonna have to mount this outside next week, I think. But uh, some basic information on here, obviously you got name, status, uh, the model it is, the firmware at 1.6.4, IP address, MAC address, and link state, and uptime, it's been up for eight minutes. If I go over to general, I can click on uh, details here and I will get the name of it. So I could name this, you know, back door or whatever I wanted to here. And this one actually is gonna go to the back door. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. Um, I can change the paired camera. So I can say that it's paired to no camera or any particular camera if I wanted to change it to another camera. Um, and if you click on lighting here, it brings us back to those same controls that we had there in setup. Again, sensitivity and how long it's gonna stay on after, uh, after it's triggered. And then in manage, I'm gonna go ahead and discard those changes. I'm gonna go and manage. This is kind of a nice feature. If you're gonna put up three or four of these, um, the locate feature just makes the, the light go into flash mode and so that you can see which one it is. Pretty, uh, pretty nice, I, you know, if you're putting five or six of them out there, that might be a nice feature to have. You've got reboot and unmanage. Actually, I set this up before and I unmanaged it just so that I could come back and do this demo again. Um, pretty simple stuff, nothing over the top here. Um, just shows up in your dashboard like any other device. There's not a lot of other settings to it. Um, so, you know, that kind of brings me to what are the use cases for this? Where do I see this uh, in the Ubiquiti lineup? I'm actually kind of excited about this. You know, I've done a couple videos about IR emitters and uh, I've got, I use some IR extenders. Uh, some of the cameras have really good IR emitters. Some of the cameras don't have such great IR emitters. But one of the things in my parking lot, and I, I would assume that is, um, probably a pretty common uh, situation is I would like an actual light to come on. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, when I drive up to the back of my building, uh, I would like a light just to kind of welcome me to the building. Right now I have some older uh, lights that are uh, with motion detectors. They're big floodlights. And uh, I like actually the form factor of this. I think this will look a lot more discreet and attractive on the side of my building than that, those older um, lights. And the older lights that I have on the side of my building are have the electrical um, conduit on the outside of the building and it comes down from the roof, which I think is ugly. 
Um, and so, you know, that brings me to the other point. Not only do I want some security and light where, um, where these cameras are, I think that the LED light over the IR is nice because I, you get some extra security with it. Um, obviously a light coming on would, you know, alert an intruder that they're, you know, they're being monitored or they're, they're seen. The biggest use case for me that I see is for us to get electrical put to, uh, to an area where we're doing security cameras means we have to engage an electrician, they have to come out and run that cable. Um, we're low voltage contractors in the state of Florida and Georgia. So for us, we're able just to run the cable over there, keep it simple, um, power it over a switch, don't have to worry about circuits and that kind of stuff. Um, in some of my earlier videos, I did an IR emitter, extender, um, and that needed power, which I just don't think is a really graceful solution. This you could run a Cat5 cable, Cat6 cable over to it, terminate it into your switch like all of your other cabling or your relay rack or your, um, your patch panel and keep it really tight and inside of your stack. And if you knew from the get go on a project that you were going to need some lighting back there where the camera's going, you just run two cables and you're done with it. And it's really simple and easy. You don't have to engage an electrician. You don't have to worry about the extra complexity of electrical wiring along with your low voltage. So um, I think that's really uh, the best use case for me. I know it's getting a lot of flack when I actually ask for questions in the forums and in Reddit. A lot of people said, you know, Ubiquity needs to kind of stay in their, their own lane here. Some of these products are getting out of what we are, you know, traditionally using Ubiquity for. But I think this is a, a, is a special use case where I, I could see people using this um, quite a bit and being happy that they can do it. Um, now, the, well, the proof in the pudding is gonna be how good this looks at night um, and how much light we're gonna be able to cast with this. Um, but I can tell you for $99, for me, over engaging an electrician and having an electrician go out there and put a, a, a normal light out there, I think that's gonna be a small fraction of the cost. Now I've got more uh, dynamic scheduling with it. I can use it in conjunction with uh, the, the protect system that I've already got there. And I think it's gonna be a win-win for me. And I like the form factor. I think for $99, uh, you know, it's really hard to go wrong with this. Um, you know, obviously it's, uh, what is it? It's June of 2021. Ubiquity is still having some supply chain issues. So, you know, can you get, you know, three or four of these to put out in front of your house or your, your office? I don't know, that may be a whole nother issue, but uh, I do see a place for this in the Protect lineup. Um, I can see that I will use these in certain areas. I think a back door uh, is a perfect area to have a nice floodlight in addition to the security camera system. So. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. It's a pretty simple setup. Um, if this is the kind of video that you like, please like and subscribe. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.